Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Protopilot. And in this episode, and I'm really excited about this, we're gonna start dipping our toes into the world of productivity apps. So specifically, we're going to be prototyping a messaging app. And Protopy is really exceptional at realizing your designs in the productivity space because productivity apps tend to have a lot more advanced features and interactions. Now that does mean that the content of this tutorial is gonna be a little more advanced, but if you're just starting out or if you're a beginner, then please do follow along. I'm going to make it as easy as I possibly can and make it accessible for everybody. So without further ado, let's have a look at what we're gonna be building. Okay, so we've seen what we're gonna be building, so let's get started and get creating it. Okay, so let me just quickly go through the structure of the prototype that I've already got created so you can effectively follow along and create your own messaging app. So over here on the left-hand side inside the layers panel, I've got a message one container group and inside of that that's got a text field called message one and that's currently set to zero width and also the whole container is set to an opacity of zero okay then below that we've got a text field group so this effectively makes up the text input field the part that we're going to type our message in and inside of that we've got the send button it's just a basic set of graphics nothing nothing clever in there and then we've got one of Protopy's native input fields and you'll get that from the text drop down here. Okay. And this is called input one. Okay. And then the header's just a bunch of graphics. It's just there for visual effects. There's nothing really, um, anything really going on in there. Okay. So most of the stuff we're going to be doing is going to be focusing around obviously the text field input and this message one container group. Okay, so the first thing we're going to build is the ability for the message box to move up when we tap inside. So the keyboard's gonna come up and we want the message box to follow the animation of the keyboard, okay? So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna come over to our triggers panel and we're gonna add a focus trigger. And we're going to choose input one. So as you can see, this only lists the input fields that we've got inside of our prototype scene. And we've only got that one input one, so that's all that it gives us. So we're gonna select that. And we're gonna leave this at its defaults. Okay, so inside of this, we're gonna add a move response. And we're going to choose the text field group. And for this text field group to follow the keyboard, we're going to need to write a formula. So let's quickly have a look at how we're going to create this formula. So I've got my screen here and the parts of the, the prototype that I need to know is my screen height. I've also going to need to know my text field height. Um, I want a gap in between the text field and where the keyboard is. So we've got a gap to take into account. And then finally, we've got the keyboard height. And we need to know what all these heights are because we, when we use the move response, we need to know its distance from the top of the screen, okay? So first off, to create our formula, we're gonna start with our screen height. So that's our first value that we're going to need. So we'll just type or write in screen height here. Okay, and then we need to start subtracting these other values. So from that, we want to subtract the text field height. And we're gonna use the height property that we can get for the text field. And we then need to minus the gap. So whatever that gap's gonna be, I'm gonna make that eight pixels probably. So, but effectively for our formula, we need the gap. And then finally, we want to minus the keyboard height. Okay, so this effectively is going to be our formula. 
that we're going to need to create. So let's go back into Protoply and pump this into our response. Okay, so we now know what the formula is going to look like. So let's go ahead and type it in. So we want to add it in here in our wire field. So we're just going to tap into the wire field here and we're going to tap the FX button and we're going to type 812 minus and then we're going to hit the dollar symbol to get our special variables up and we want to use the keyboard height variable. So we're going to choose that and we're going to minus from that the text field and specifically the text field height. So we just type a dot and we choose the height property. And then from that, we're just going to minus eight. So we just want to have a little bit of a, a gap from the bottom of the text field to the keyboard. Okay, so that completes our formula. Let's click OK. And let's come, up, come over to preview and we're going to give that a test. Okay, so I'm going to come over into my preview window. I'm going to tap to focus into my text field. And as you can see, the keyboard comes up and the text field animates up with the keyboard. Okay, so next up, we're going to create the message bubble. So to do that, we're going to add a detect trigger. And we're going to look for message one. So the text layer here, and we're going to choose that. And we want its text property. Somewhere down here. And within this detect trigger, we're going to add an opacity. And we're going to target the message one container this time. And we want to set its opacity to 100. Okay, so we're going to use the, the fact that the detect is detecting that we're typing to, to make this opacity 100. Okay. okay, so next up, we're going to add a move response. And we're going to set the X to 359. So that's not a magic number. So if we just come over to this message one container here, you can see that it's actually, I've actually arranged the origin on the right hand side. And you can see it's currently invisible. But what we want to do is we, we want to start this um, element where it's completely overlaying the text field. But then when we press the button and we have the animation where the message bubble appears, we want it to go over to the right. So 359 is just basically moving this over to the right hand side okay okay so that's the x taken care of for the y we need to create a formula so we just need to adjust the um the distance that the message is going to travel from the text field so it goes up into the bubble and we can use a formula for this just to make it a bit a bit more flexible a bit more future proof so we're going to look for the text field group and we want its Y position. So that just saves us putting in a hard value. And we're going to minus 64. So 64 is just basically the distance I've worked out where I want from the text to move up into the bubble and sit above the text field. Okay. Okay, let's click OK on that. Next up, I'm going to add a scale response. And I want to add another formula into this width field. And the formula I'm going to create this time is going to target the message one text layer. And we want its width property. And I'm going to just add a seemingly arbitrary number to that 32. Okay, so what we're doing here is we're basically changing the width of the container as we type the characters into the text field. So we want to make sure that the chat bubble is the same width as the text we're typing. And the 32 is just some extra padding on the bubble graphic itself. So it basically gives it some padding left and right. Next up, we're going to add a text response. If I can find it. And we're going to choose input one. We're going to change content to formula and we're just going to type in here some double quotes. So effectively what this does, it clears the text out of the original input field 
as we as our message moves from the input field into the chat bubble. Okay. Let's click OK on that. Okay, so this about wraps up this section of creating the message bubble. We can't really test anything yet because to test it, we need to create the sending message interactions and we're gonna do that next. Okay, so we're at the final part of the prototype. We're going to create the sending the message interactions. So to do that, we're going to come over to our triggers panel and we're gonna add a tap trigger. And what we want to do is we want to target this send button. So this blue circle with the arrow in it. So I'm just gonna search for that. And within our tap trigger, we're going to add a send response. So we're just gonna use some messages to, to kind of create this, this interaction. And this just makes it a little bit more modular. Okay, so it's a bit of, bit of a best practice, you could say. Okay, we're going to leave the channel at center current scene and we're going to create a message. So the message can be anything we want it to be because effectively we're just going to look for that message and I'm going to make it send message. So try to make it as obvious as possible. And I'm going to use camel case there. That's just how I type things. And the next part of it, so that's the first part where we tap the button and it sends this message out. Whenever you have a send, you also need a receive. So we're gonna add a receive trigger. And we're also gonna make sure the channel is received from current scene. So you want to set your send and receive to be looking at the same place. And if we tap into the message field, you'll see we've already got this autocomplete. It already knows that we've got a send message there. So we're just gonna select that from the dropdown. And within this receive trigger, we're going to create a text response. And we're gonna choose message one. So that's our text layer. So that's our text layer inside of the bubble. And we want to change content to formula. And we wanna write a little formula in here. And the formula we're gonna write is basically gonna take the text from the input field and it's going to add it to the text layer inside of the chat bubble, okay? So to do that, we're going to choose the input one layer and we're going to type a dot and we want its text property. And the text property is where the message text is being typed into. And we're going to click OK. OK, so that's all we should need to do. OK, so here we are over on my device. So I'm just going to tap the message field. I'm just going to type a message and I'm going to hit the send button and there you go you can see that my message has appeared in the text bubble above the input field okay so that brings us to the end of this video if you liked the video then please give it a like and if you want to see more from me and find out when my new content comes out, then please subscribe to the channel. Okay, so in the next video, we're gonna be taking this same messaging app prototype up a level. So I'm gonna show you how to add multiple bubbles to, to the app prototype. And also we're gonna take a hopefully interesting direction with it and we're gonna turn it into a prop for film and TV. So we're also gonna add the ability to add what's called a canned response, so a predefined response. And this typically is used inside of props in TV and film where you have the actor typing on the keyboard, but just to get around any spelling mistakes and things like that, we're actually gonna pass a pre-written message, which is the message that's gonna be added to the bubble. So hopefully that should be a bit of fun and hopefully I'll see you in that video. Take it easy.